Well, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne, has delivered a budget today against the backdrop of a global economy that is weaker than it was six to 12 months ago. And against that, that backdrop, he said that um, productivity growth needs to be downgraded, uh, that debt as a share of GDP will need to go up, and that there will be need to be spending cuts of three and a half billion extra on top of what's already been announced by 2020. But despite all those, all those changes to forecasts, he's still upbeat about the economy and says that it will grow faster than any other major economy in the world. There's been a lot of talk over the last five years or so in terms of rebalancing the economy out of a London-centric economy to one that benefits the whole nation. And in recent years, George Osborne has talked a lot about the Northern Powerhouse. And today was, was no exception with lots of name checks of the Northern Powerhouse. Um, that's a shame that the Midlands wasn't mentioned a great deal in his speech, but there have been quite a lot of announcements recently in respect of the Midlands. Uh, for example, new jobs at CAD CAM in Coventry and Nestle in Staffordshire, uh, to name but two um, increases in, in jobs in the region. Uh, there's also massive investment in infrastructure and building work going on uh, just down the road here in Birmingham, Three Snow Hill. Uh, that's been announced, a 200 million investment uh, in the centre of Birmingham. And, for example, everyone who works in Birmingham can see the inf investment in infrastructure that's going on with Paradise Circus, the reintroduction of trams into the centre of the city and so on. The, the Chancellor has introduced a range of measures today that are likely to have small businesses applauding from every shop on the high street, from estate agents to news agents to hairdressers. Um, he's abolished uh, business rates for a, a large number of, of small businesses and uh, has lessened them for a, for a whole range of others. Uh, the corporation tax rate for those with incorporated businesses will reduce from 17% to 17% rather than 18% from 2020. Uh, the stamp duty on commercial properties is going to be massively reduced as they've changed the regime for that. Class 2 national insurance contributions are going to be abolished completely for the self-employed and capital gains tax rates are decreasing for small, uh, lower rate taxpayers from 18% to 10%. The stamp duty change to commercial properties is, is likely to make a, a significant difference for any small business making a purchase of a of a, of a property under, under £500,000 as it's likely to decrease their burden. I think the Chancellor gave the example of somebody buying a pub for £270,000 that the rate of stamp duty would decrease from £8,000 to £3,000 on that, which is a, which is a massive boost for anyone uh, doing anything like getting their own pub and uh, reducing their costs at the outset. Whilst small businesses might be happy about all the measures, they're likely to need to be paid for by large businesses who, who seemingly are going to have their tax burden increased uh, through measures on international tax changes and clampdowns on tax avoidance. Uh, there are various changes um, such as restrictions on interest relief for those that the government think they're over-borrowing in the UK and there are also going to be restrictions on the utilisation and sheltering of losses uh, that businesses can use to set off against their profits. The stamp duty measures that I mentioned earlier on as well are likely to be more expensive for larger businesses as well because the stamp duty rates for larger commercial property acquisitions are going to go up, which means the overall take from the stamp duty changes is going to go up in terms of what the government receives. Outside of the changes for small businesses, which I said would be welcome, there's a lot of good news for the individual as well. A lot of people thought that there might be changes to the pensions tax relief regime and the Chancellor announced that there wouldn't be any today. He's also introduced the introduction of changes to the ISA regime. Not only has he increased the ISA limit from £15,000 to £20,000 for individuals, uh, there's going to be the introduction of a lifetime ISA that will allow people under the age of 40 to effectively save in the same way that they do as for a pension but to take that money when they want, which will allow people greater flexibility to, to use their money um, that they've saved with the additional of government amounts that, that go in uh, to use at the time when they need it most rather than waiting until their retirement. There's also news on changes to personal allowances as well and, and tax thresholds. Rather than the increases in personal allowances to 11,200 next year, the personal allowance is going to increase to 11,500, which will take a lot of people out of, out of the tax regime altogether. 
There's also very good news for middle income earners as well. The higher rate threshold is increasing significantly from a little under 43,000 uh, that was planned for next year to 45,000, which will take a lot of people out of the higher rate tax threshold.